This is the 18th in a series of videos in which I'm attempting to repair an HP 9830A desktop calculator. In the previous videos I've detailed repairing a lot of electronic faults, replaced a lot of ICs, but then came to the conclusion that there was a, a fault on the ROM card, which is this. There's at least three or four failed ROMs on this board, and I went about proving that in various ways. If you watch the previous videos, you'll see that I've uh, made a jig to read the data from this. I compared that against the original patent, and then I was using the code from the 9830 emulator and comparing it against that. And I've written various software utilities to do the comparisons and the various uh, file conversions. Um, but it did look like the, um, the fault was uh, with this ROM card. Now, of course, trying to find replacement ROMs for this would be pretty much impossible, so I didn't really go down that route. It didn't seem uh, worthwhile. Uh, instead, what I decided to do was uh, design a replacement card that used one of these. It is, of course, an EEPROM. And it was a, a fairly easy decision to make because, as I say, you can't really get these devices. And because I'd already extracted the code and could format it in a way needed for an EEPROM, it, uh, it made sense to select the EEPROM route and it also means that I can design a board that allows me to have more than one version of the firmware and be able to select them through uh, just a, a simple switch system. There are some complications in designing a board for this. Uh, firstly, the output from this card is merged with the output from other ROM cards and it's done through the use of uh, open collector drivers. So the output from this card goes onto a common bus and on one of the cards there are some pull-up resistors on that bus and then all the cards that are connected to that bus use open collector outputs. I could of course have just connected the output of this directly onto the bus because it does have tri-state outputs. Now the danger in doing that is a tri-state output is not the same as a um, open collector output and they vary in a fairly important way. With open collector outputs, the output is only ever pulled low by the buffer and it's allowed to float for a high and it uh, relies on external pull-up resistors to bring the line back up to the high level. And that means you can quite safely connect multiple cards together and whatever they do, uh, they're not going to hurt each other or, or do any damage because the worst case is they'll all just try to pull the lines low at the same time. If they want to assert a high then they just go into their open collector state and uh, obviously there's no contention on the bus then. Now that is of course very different from a tri-state uh, output such as you get on an EEPROM. Although in a tri-state the outputs are effectively floating so you can pull them high and pull them low and there's no real um, current sync or source from the device. Obviously you would run into a problem if the device is accidentally enabled uh, when it shouldn't be, um, simply because the tri-state outputs when they're enabled will be able to sync and source current. That is, they will actively drive the output high or actively drive the output low. And if you have two devices connected to each other doing that, something's going to get damaged. So in other words, if this is connected to a bus and another card is trying to uh, pull the line low, while this is trying to um, pull the line high, then obviously something's going to give and uh, there's going to be some damage somewhere. So I decided not to do that and I would stick to the same regime as used on the original card, and that is to use um, open collector drivers for the output. So I designed a board based around that and the prototype has finally arrived. In fact, I've ordered a few of these and I've checked to make sure that um, mechanically I got the dimensions correct and luckily it is correct, it does fit into the machine and all the uh, edge connectors line up the way they should. It is of course double-sided. Um, this uh, of course is based around the device uh, I just showed. Now I may need to make a modification to this card. I didn't build it into the original design. I don't like making designs more complex than they need to be. 
Um, whether it's going to be required or not, I'm not quite sure yet, but it's based around the fact that there are two address 8 pins on each of the original ROMs. Very strange arrangement, so effectively the ROM is kind of like two smaller ROMs uh, internally, and there's an address 8 line going to uh, each of those two uh, sections of the ROM. There's an address 8 and a not address 8, so they are supposed to be mutually exclusive, that is one's high, the other's low, and vice versa, and they should never be both high at the same time. Now I have drawn out a logic diagram for the address 8 lines on the original ROM card, and when it's in the machine they're only ever driven a high one at a time, but there are times when they are both low, and it may be that uh, that is a requirement for the machine. It's not so much a requirement for the card to work. All you need to do for the card to work is have one high and one low and vice versa. But whether or not I will need to add a small piece of logic to make sure that the address lines are properly decoded and they control the output of the um, EEPROM accordingly, uh, I'll have to wait until I look more closely at the way that the card interfaces and works within the machine. I've had a good look at it and I'm fairly certain I might need to put some simple decoding in there. But unfortunately I couldn't find a data sheet for these EEPROMs so I'm not quite sure exactly um, what happens to the outputs when both lines are uh, actually low. It might be that the lines actually enable or disable the outputs rather than driving them all high or low but I'll have to see uh, how that works. But either way it's not a, a big issue, it would just be a very small modification to the um, to the card. So the next step is to get this card built up. Um, now I'm going to be using sockets on the prototype simply um, because I might need to uh, modify the uh, design uh, or if I need to uh, try different versions of code in the EEPROM. Also I want to be able to put in some test code as well to test various parts of the machine which would be extremely useful for future proofing it should any more faults develop. Um, but when there's a zip socket in the card it obviously won't go into the machine. Now I have found that although the cards are very close together if you trim off the leads protruding through the back of adjacent cards then you can actually use sockets in the card that it sits next to. There's just about enough room for doing that but you do need to trim off any uh, leads that protrude through the back of the card. It's a bit of a pain having to do that but it's, um, it doesn't mean that you can at least use sockets when you replace ICs which is obviously uh, very desirable. So the next step is to get this assembled and once it's assembled I'll get back on camera, we'll have a quick look at it and then I'll plug it into the uh, test sheet that I made for reading this card and see if I can read the code out of the EEPROM on this card in the same way. If it works in the test sheet then at least I know that all the connections are working the way that they should and that there shouldn't really be any issue with plugging it into the machine. Whether it works in the machine or not I think is going to come down to this uh, address 8 um, dual pin issue but I'll look at that in more detail once I've got it plugged in and we get the analyzer hooked up. Okay so that's the board assembled um, next step is to get some code into the uh, ROM and then plug this into the uh, test jig I made and see if I can read the ROM in the same way I could the uh, original board. The unpopulated resistors are really in case I need to force specific behaviour to make this exactly match the behaviour of the original board. I don't think they'll be needed but just in case I've included these uh, and also these resistors would normally be on the T register card. But if I want to run this outside of the machine for test purposes or any other reason then I can fit these and I won't need to uh, worry about external pull-ups. As I said I'm using the same system here of open collector drivers. So without the pull-ups the outputs wouldn't really do anything. And if I want to run the card in isolation then uh, I can just fit these and it'll make it uh, much easier to test. The switches at the top just allow me to select different uh, banks within the ROM so I can put uh, multiple images for the machine into the ROM or even small test sequences to test various parts of the, uh, the machine. Okay, so uh, that's it for this video. In the next video I'll get some code into the ROM, we'll plug it into the test jig and uh, see if it actually works.